It's, it starts with a choice. Um, so, you know, most people don't even uh, know that they have choice. So it starts by acknowledging, hey, um, whatever went on in my past, whatever occurred, whatever I went through, this is not how my future has to be. I can make a choice to go into a different direction. And that's something we have to acknowledge because most of us have been brought up with the point of view, okay, your past shapes your future. And yes, it does, but it doesn't mean you don't have the choice to change the direction of your future. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you for tuning in and being here today. So, you know, there's a lot going on and I realize the, the navigating, the challenges, the ups and downs of what's going on in your world, career, kids, life, family. And it just reminds me of a friend, Susan Freeman, a business colleague and friend who said, when things aren't going right, you have to do a lot of, it's bending, weaving, bobbing, and flexing. So bend, weave, bob, flex, and you're probably doing a lot of that right now. But the question is, as you are doing the, the bend, the weave, the bob, and the flex, and you're seeing difficulties and challenges, are you able to find a silver lining? Do you see possibilities? And, you know, another friend who wrote a blog post was talking about how it's just as easy to amplify anxiety and negative as it is to be happy. And that's a choice. And that is the segue to my special guest today. So joining me on Women Worldwide is Susanna Mittermeier. And Susanna is a psychologist and the founder of Pragmatic Psychology. She's also the number one international best-selling author of a book called Practical Tools for Being Crazy Happy. And that's why you need to listen in to what Susanna has to share with us today. So Susanna, it's great to have you on my show. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. What a pleasure. <laughs> well, there's a big draw <laughs> to you because anyone who is working to be able to transform what, what are problems and difficulties into possibilities and powerful choices is really important today, especially as we're still in a global pandemic and so much goes on in our world. But before we get to all of your great advice, maybe you can just share a little bit about your journey to pragmatic psychology and becoming a psychologist. Well, um, I never knew what I wanted to do when I was, you know, when I was an adult, when I was a child, I, you know, I was one of those, hey, what else is possible seekers? And I was more aware of, you know, what other people wanted from me than what I wanted. And so, um, but I always knew I wanted to show people how great they are and the best that I could found, find in an academic, uh, you know, what to study book was to become a psychologist. So that's how I started. Um, and, um, yeah, I started to work in psychiatry, in child oncology, and um, especially in psychiatry, I saw, you know, what the perspective is, you know, it's, it's normal to look at what's not good, and what the problem is. And um, so I always knew that there is a different possibility available, and that um, we can actually look at what's, what's possible, you know, and that's how the whole journey became and began, and uh, that's how Pragmatic Psychology was created. Well, this is really important work, so we're, we're happy that you're doing this. And maybe you could just take us, and I'm sure it is a lot of work. It's not you just wake up one day and all of a sudden say, I'm going to be positive and I'm going to make sure I turn everything a certain way and shift your mindset. There's inner work that goes on. But what are some of the, the, the first steps that, even someone can get to a place of saying, okay, I know it's time to try to take these steps and make a transformation. Um, it's, it starts with a choice. Um, so, you know, most people don't even uh, know that they have choice. So it starts by acknowledging, hey, um, whatever went on in my past, 
whatever occurred, whatever I went through, this is not how my future has to be. I can make a choice to go into a different direction. And that's something we have to acknowledge because most of us have been brought up with the point of view, okay, your past shapes your future. And yes, it does, but it doesn't mean you don't have the choice to change the direction of your future. So it always starts by choice and by acknowledging I can change my life every moment. I can change direction every moment. And that's, you know, if you hear something like this and you go, oh, you know, it, it just opens up something in your world, you know, it's true. You know, um, like what's true will make you feel lighter. It will open up your world. So because we hear so many things that people tell us how to change our lives, what to do. And most of us are used to listening to what other people say. And that's great. But when you listen to other people, always ask yourself, is that true for me? And what's true for you will always make you feel lighter. It always will give you a sense of, oh, you know, I know this is true for me. It speaks to something that's true for me. And, and you know, yeah, that's, that, that's the direction I can go towards. So is that trusting emotions more? So, for example, when you said, you know, you have a, a choice and you can change things, I got a feeling of, ah, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> great. So is, is that, because I know there's a lot of external chatter. There's external circumstances that tend to impact what we say, what we do, how we feel. Are you saying that blocking that out is an important step? I would say including it, uh, including what you are aware of, but then, then differentiating between what's coming from you and what's coming from the outside, you know, like acknowledging, like it's like it, it, if you try to exclude, it takes a lot of energy, you know, to try to keep things away or push things away and you got to come. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it makes you more be paranoid, you know, like, okay, what else can, can um, disturb my peace? What else do I have to take like uh, distance from? Like you say, it's like, if you include everything, you can relax into the noise rather than try to push it out. So if you relax into the noise and then ask yourself, okay, what's, what's for me and what's not mine? Like, or, you know, who does this belong to? Um, so in that way you can include all the noise but then know, okay, this is something that I'm aware of. And this is where most people confuse feelings and awareness with each right. other. Yeah. That's really interesting. You know, I've been speaking to millennials quite a bit. And I've heard this phrase, yep, when the other shoe drops, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And that kind of speaks to what you're saying about, you know, walking around, like pushing away. If you always have that expectancy of that other shoe is going to drop. That's so negative kind of figuring out the awareness versus what's right for me shifts everything. So that's really interesting. I would love for you to, first of all, share, you know, your book, practical tools for being crazy happy. First of all, that title just is, is definitely a draw <laughs> maybe to, to share um, some advice that comes out of the book, but also maybe uh, mention this. I know you have a second book that literally just was published. Yeah. So practical tools for being crazy happy are really practical tools, uh, really simple tools um, for you to be who you truly are. Um, it's like in this world, it's, you know, it's kind of normal to have a problem. And, uh, you know, if you, if you meet friends, you know, how much is expected of you to also have a, an issue, you know, if you're, if you don't have an issue or something to work on, like people have the point of view, okay, maybe I'm not real. Maybe I should have an issue. So I have something to talk about. Um, so it's kind of normal to have at least one problem. And uh, if, if you change your perspective to, you know, going from problems to possibilities that's so different that, you know, you might be frowned upon, you might be judged because it's not normal to change your perspective because you're supposed to have a problem that you, you know, you make the choice again, the choice to be different. You know, when you're being you, you're different. And um, it, it sets you up to a space of being happy you know, like having this peace, you know, I don't mean manically happy, you know, like really peaceful, peaceful happy. peaceful, happy, exactly. And, and that's like, that's seen as oftentimes crazy. If you are peacefully happy and 
go from reaction to action, it's something that is, might not be seen as normal. So you might be seen as crazy, but this is where you don't make the judgment of being crazy relevant to you anymore. You more prefer to going into the direction of, okay, yes, I'm different. And I'm, I'm going to choose that. You know what? I have been different my whole life. I mean, I guess most people who listen to your shows have a sense of being different. Um, and, and maybe have been judged for that or judged themselves for that. And this is the commitment to you, you know, giving yourself permission to be that difference. And it, it will create a peace in your world, a sense of happiness where people go, why are you so happy? You're not, you don't have a reason, you know, look at the world is going crazy. Why are you happy? You know, that's not normal. That's crazy. But that's where you're willing to be that different, to have that space. Um, that, you know, why you probably inspire others. Well, I'm so glad you said this and, and thank you. Uh, I just, I can't imagine that we live in a world where it's abnormal to be happy, that you have to have problems to almost fit in. And I, I wish the opposite was true. And I, I do feel the Women Worldwide Network and all of you who are watching and listening that you want to be different. <laughs> you, you look at everything as possibilities. And if we can make that shift, more people might gravitate to the energy <laughs> of that particular movement. Now, can you imagine that possibility? <laughs> wow. Absolutely. And it's like more and more people don't settle for the drama anymore. They're not satisfied with, okay, drama is normal. Um, I want to go for, you know, I want to go for what works. So it's basically from dramatic to pragmatic. I mean, pragmatic means doing what works rather than settling and, um, you know, going for the drama and thinking life is all about having problems and then solving them. It's about, you know, asking, okay, I, I, I guess there will be moments where people go, I cannot see the possibility right now. All I see is what's being handed to me, which is the problem and the drama. But that's where you come in with your difference and go, you know what? I cannot imagine anything different, but I'm going to ask anyway. I'm going to ask, hey, what else is possible here? You know, and you don't try to figure it out. You don't try to find an answer. You just start by, hey, what else is possible here? How does it get any better than this? And that question changes your perspective. Mm -hmm. Other people call it maybe mindset. It changes your perspective to, you know, putting possibilities into your navigation system. Because most people have, like, if you imagine having your navigation system, um, you know, the person, you, the thing you use to go in directions in your car, I think it's called navigation system in English, yes, right? Yes, yeah. yes. GPS. Oh, that, yeah, exactly. GPS. So it, it's like if you put um, problems into your GPS, which most people do because it's normal, and then you put in, okay, show me the possibilities, you might go, I have no idea where they are because all my life I've been navigating towards problems because everybody else does. But you know, I'm just going to give it a try. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to have the answer. I'm just going to give it a shot. Okay. What else is possible here? I don't see it now, but hey, what else? It's going to change your GPS to navigating more to the possibilities without you having to figure it out. And that's where, that's where things start to shift, you know? So, yeah. I have a, I mean, I, there's a lot to unpack here. Oh, so yeah. The possibilities, I, it, it speaks to don't be so far one way or so far the other way there's maybe hundreds of choices in between and you need to almost like calibrate, <laughs> just move a little one way to the happier, to the powerful choices that lead to compound effects that make you happier and happier and then you get crazy happy. Um, but it doesn't happen overnight. And what I'm also hearing is that a slight shift probably changes a, a feeling. I like to talk about vibrations, right? So negative vibrations are really, really low. And then there's higher, happier vibrations as you get raised up. This reminds me of drama, low <laughs> vibration. Pragmatic is much higher. And there's all these steps in between. But that one little shift just keeps moving you. 
Definitely. Absolutely. It's like really choice by choice. So yeah. basically choose in 10 second increments, you know, it's like, okay, now what? Okay. I've, even if you chose something dramatic, what if you don't judge yourself for it? It's not about being perfect and never having any drama right. or avoiding anything. We're not talking about avoiding and just being happy. It's about being present with whatever occurs. And then from that choice of being with it, not, you know, trying to get rid of it, but being, being present and relaxing into the intensity, you can see, okay, even if I'm dramatic right now, what if there's nothing wrong? You know, you can even enjoy the drama because in well, the that, moment. That's a great point. Yeah. Because you're right. Drama doesn't have to be negative. Drama could literally be excitement over something really positive yep. that's happening. Yeah. You make it that way. Yeah. That's and then you can, you can even have fun with it, you know, like turn on your humor with the drama. I'm, oh, I'm going to make an Oscar nominated, you know, drama moment, you know, and you go for it for fun. And, you know, maybe 10 seconds later you go, okay, I'm over it. I'm going to make myself a coffee, you know, <laughs> and, and it's like, it's this, this, you can be much faster once you right. turn on humor, you don't make it right or wrong. It's just, you know, what else is there to choose? Exactly. Well, I mean, this is all so interesting. So you've written the, the second book, it's out. Are you, um, you know, with all that you're doing, do you ever have your moments of this isn't feeling right or I actually feel stress and then move yourself out of it? I mean, this is real stuff. Does this happen yeah. to you? Uh, absolutely. So, you know, none of this is being perfect and just having, oh, everything is amazing and perfect. That's, that's never the thing, you know, it's like, uh, it's, you know, things occur, people occur in your life and then you're like, or something in the world as we have now shifts and change and you go, okay, now what? And there might be moments, like I have moments when I react, you know, but then they don't last as long anymore because I must say I'm too lazy for drama. It takes so much work, you know, it's like... <laughs> gosh, you know, it takes so much energy and then I have to think about it and understand it and calculate. I'm like too much work. So uh, nowadays I'm just, it's a it's much faster shift. You know, when I'm having a drama, I, I go, okay, I'm going to enjoy this. Okay. I'm over it. Now what, you know, now what else is possible? And that's, it's just faster nowadays. Yeah. So what about uh, keeping your your focus. I mean, you're high, you're high energy, so you're you're motivated. But are there times where um, you are less focused or more focused? How do you stay in focus so you can accomplish what you want to every day? By allowing myself to be not focused. You know, when when I have moments of you know, I'm like, okay. I usually ask nowadays, body, what do you require? You know, um, and most of the times I realize that my body is telling me something that it needs something different. You know, like two days ago, um, I was I was fully on with projects and getting a new book book out and everything. And um, and then the day after I was like, oh, so drained out. So I asked my body, sweetheart, what do you require? You know, I talked with my body and it said, just let me be. So I was sitting on the couch drinking tea and watching movies, you know, That's and it was so relaxing. And then I took a hike in the mountains. I'm in Austria. I'm wearing my Austrian outfit. Oh, uh, beautiful. And, oh, thank you. And, and, and so, you know, that's what my body asked me for. And then when I followed that and allowed that moment of doing nothing, you know, like it feels like you're not productive, which is not true. It's just an interpretation. Then I could, the next day I was on again, you know, so do you think that, because there might be some women worldwide, the network out there saying, I don't have time to sit on the couch. I could ask my body and my body would say, I need three weeks. Is it okay just to take little mini moments if necessary? Like it doesn't have to be a whole stretch. It, would you recommend take 10 minutes or 15 minutes mm -hmm. on the okay. couch? We just have a uh, electricity that went out. Oh, oh my! Yeah. Okay, so we <laughs> we're navigating. It's. it's I'm sorry. Just <laughs> like as you say. Okay, cool. Sorry. So, what was the question? So the question was, um, you know, some of the women worldwide 
members out there, people watching and listening might be saying, Susanna, I don't have time <laughs> to like, I, I asked my body, but my body says I need three weeks to stay on the couch and rest. That's how tired I am. Is it okay? Yeah. And is there benefit just to 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there, a nice little walk for 20 minutes and then go back? Like, do you need that long stretch? It Great question. Yeah. That's a great question. And it's, it's exactly like you said, it's like the more you start to listen to your body, cause it, it, it's going to tell you it's going to, okay. So when you just can't write an email and you can't finish it, you might want to ask your body, Hey, what are you, what are you asking me for? Oh, please take a walk or take a bath or dance crazily to music or something mm -hmm. different, you know, and then <laughs> whatever it is. Exactly. And that might be like you say, five, 10 minutes or half an hour. And, you know, if you prioritize your body 30 minutes per day, you know, and ask what, what would you like, you're going to get a, get a different connection to your body. And you probably, you most probably won't need two or three weeks, you know, to take a vacation. Um, I tried to take vacation once, you know, and this was the most horrible time in my life. I, I tried to do nothing for two weeks and I've never been that depressed. So vacation <laughs> Right. I can't do it. Um, so I, but I do it in between, you know, I take a day or I take half a day or whatever. And it's so it's, it's, I must say it's magically because I have the same point of view. I'm like, how do I fit, you know, any free time, like free time into this schedule? I have no idea. But then when you work and orchestrate with your body, mm -hmm. somehow the space opens up where you have that time, you know, it's like where you don't, prioritize time you prioritize you know creations and working with your body oh yes yeah. yeah so your body has to be working with you because yeah. i find that when i'm challenged by whatever it is on my desk and i walk away and i go and do something whether it's hop on the elliptical pet the dogs go outside and you know we have a fountain in the pool i love the way that it sounds and just breathe and listen to the birds when i go back not only does my body feel better but my mind the creativity starts flowing again and whatever was blocked is now just coming to me like it's easy so it works it definitely works absolutely i agree yep and you know that free time, like people, we have been learning to do business and free time as two separate things, which is not really how it works in practical times. It's like even taking a walk is business, you know, yeah. that's too. That's really interesting. So I can't even believe I'm up to the advice question. <laughs> so Susanna, if you're going to round out advice and tell the Women Worldwide Network something about really taking those challenges and difficulties and turning into the possibilities and the powerful choices. What do you want to say? Well, I would say whatever seems like this is the way it is and it, it can't be different. Ask a question, you know, like to anything that seems like this is the way it is an answer you have in your world, right or wrong, good or bad, ask, Hey, even if you can't imagine it, what else is possible here? And don't compare yourself to other people. What do, what do you know? What's your way of dealing with this? If there's no normal way to need to react to this, what's your way of creating something different in this situation? That's awesome. Ask the question and don't compare. Excellent advice. I hope all of you out there take that advice and run with it and then let us know <laughs> how you're doing and give yourself time and breathe a lot too, right? <laughs> okay. Last question, Susanna, super easy. Where can people find out more about you, your work, and your books? It's uh, SusannaMittermeyer.com or PragmaticPsychology.com. Excellent. And are you on social media at all? Can they find you on LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, wherever you hang out? Mostly on Insta and uh, Facebook and Spotify and... Uh, uh, yeah, basically all of these. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I hope everybody connects with you. Thank you so much for sharing your journey, your advice. Everything you shared is, is really helpful. So thank, thank you so much for this amazing interview. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you to all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. 
keep the conversations going and the feedback coming. We love hearing from you. When you share what's going on in your world, how you're feeling and your challenges, we can line up the guests who can help you and give really great advice like Susanna did today. Okay, friends, until our next episode, be well, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.